Welcome to Fortune Forecast, and I am Daisy Raisler, your hostess. We've been going through the works of Wallace D. Waddles in his book, The Science of Getting Rich. My takeaway from the previous chapter was the idea that there is abundance an overly abundance of opportunity for the man who will go with the tide instead of trying to swim against it. Have you ever noticed in your life that sometimes things have been a struggle? And have you made that conscious decision to just kind of not fight it? And then you realize when you stop fighting it, how you're taken in a different direction and it seems just begins to feel right. It's taken me a while to figure that out, but I've seen so many examples of that in my life. The other part that I appreciated listening to was when he said, no one is kept in poverty by a shortness in the supply of riches. And he mentioned that there is no limit to the supply of formless stuff. And then adding that new forms are constantly being made and older ones are dissolving, but all are shapes assumed by the one thing. Everything you see on earth is made from one original substance out of which all things proceed. And sometimes, and I believe that's what science is constantly trying to demonstrate or to confirm or to debunk. It's that mystery that holds men just mesmerized as to this life and how life continues to expand into more life. And so, you know, when we think about the idea of abundance, all we have to do is think about the one seed of an orange fruit. You put that one seed in the ground. You give it the proper attention, the proper soil, water and light and it will give you a tree, a tree that then will turn around and give you so many fruits with hundreds, if not thousands of seeds so that you can continue the process over and over again. So why is it that many of us want to believe somebody else's story that there isn't enough? Maybe the government is saying there isn't enough. Maybe your family, a loved one, a dear one, a near one, is saying there isn't enough. Yet when you see nature, nature in its rawness, nature in its perfect imperfection, nature how it's intended to be, you see abundance. So I believe that he is right when he stated in this last chapter, nature is an inexhaustible storehouse of riches. The supply will never run short. Original substance is alive with creative energy. All right. Well, if you are ready, let's move on to chapter four. The first principle in the science of getting rich. Thought is the only power which can produce tangible riches from the formless substance. The stuff from which all things are made is a substance which thinks, and a thought of form in this substance produces the form. Original substance moves according to its thoughts. Every form and process you see in nature is the visible expression of a thought in original substance. As the formless stuff thinks of a form, it takes that form. As it thinks of a motion, it makes that motion. That is the way all things were created. We live in a thought world which is part of a thought 
universe. The thought of a moving universe extended throughout formless substance and the thinking stuff moving according to that thought took the form of systems of planets and maintains that form. Thinking substance takes the form of its thought and moves according to the thought, holding the idea of a circling system of suns and worlds. It takes the form of these bodies and moves them as it thinks. Thinking the form of a slow-growing oak tree, it moves accordingly and produces the tree. Those centuries may be required to do the work. In creating, the formless seems to move according to the lines of motion it has established. The thought of an oak tree does not cause the instant formation of a full-grown tree, but it does start in motion the forces which will produce the tree along established lines of growth. Every thought of form held in thinking substance causes the creation of the form, but always, or at least generally, along lines of growth and action already established. The thought of a house of a certain construction, if it were impressed upon formless substance, might not cause the instant formation of the house, but it would cause the turning of creative energies already working in trade and commerce into such channels as to result in the speedy building of the house. And if there were no existing channels through which the creative energy could work, then the house would be formed directly from primal substance without waiting for the slow process of the organic and inorganic world. No thought of form can be impressed upon original substance without causing the creation of the form. Man is a thinking center and can originate thought. All the forms that man fashions with his hands must first exist in his thought. He cannot shape a thing until he has thought the thing. And so far man has confined his efforts wholly to the work of his hands. He has applied manual labor to the world of forms, seeking to change or modify those already existing. He has never thought of trying to cause the creation of a new forms by impressing his thoughts upon formless substance. When a man has a thought form, he takes material from the forms of nature and makes an image of the form which is in his mind. He has so far made little or no effort to cooperate with formless intelligence, to work with the Father. He has not dreamed that he can do what he seeth the Father doing. Man reshapes and modifies existing forms by manual labor. He has given no attention to the question whether he may not produce things from formless substance by communicating his thoughts to it. We propose to prove that he may do so, to prove that any man or woman may do so, and to show how. As our first step, we must lay down three fundamental propositions. First, we assert that there is one original formless stuff of substance from which all things are made. All the seemingly many elements 
all the seemingly many all the seemingly many elements are but different presentations of one element. All the many forms found in organic and inorganic nature are but different shapes made from the same stuff. And this stuff is thinking stuff. A thought held in it produces the form of the thought. Thought in thinking substance produces shapes. Man is a thinking center, capable of original thought. If man can communicate his thought to original thinking substance, he can cause the creation or formation of the thing he thinks about. To summarize this, there is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the interspaces of the universe. A thought in this substance produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. Man can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. It may be asked if I can prove these statements and without going into details, I answer that I can do so both by logic and experience. And reasoning forward from this thinking substance, I come to man's power to cause the formation of the thing he thinks about. And by experiment, I find the reasoning true, and this is my strongest proof. If one man who reads this book gets rich by doing what it tells him to do, that is evidence to support of my claim. But if every man who does what it tells him to do gets rich, that is positive proof until someone goes through the process and fails. The theory is true until the process fails. And this process will not fail. For every man who does exactly what this book tells him to do will get rich. I have said that men get rich by doing things in a certain way. And in order to do so, men must become able to think in a certain way. A man's way of doing things is the direct result of the way he thinks about things. To do things in the way you want to do them, you will have to acquire the ability to think the way you want to think. This is the first step toward getting rich. To think what you want to think is to think truth, regardless of appearances. Every man has the natural and inherent power to think what he wants to think. But it requires far more effort to do so than it does to think the thoughts which are suggested by appearances. To think according to appearances is easy. To think truth, regardless of appearances, is laborious and requires the expenditure of more power than any other work man is called upon to perform. There is no labor from which most people shrink as they do from that of sustained and consecutive thought. It is the hardest work in the world. This is especially true when truth is contrary to appearances. Every appearance in the visible world tends to produce corresponding 
form in the mind which observes it, and this can only be prevented by holding the thought of the truth. To look upon the appearance of disease will produce the form of disease in your own mind, and ultimately in your body, unless you hold the thought of the truth, which is that there is no disease. It is only an appearance, and the reality is health. To look upon the appearances of poverty will produce corresponding forms in your own mind, unless you hold to the truth that there is no poverty, there is only abundance. To think when surrounded by the appearances of disease, or to think riches when in the midst of appearances of poverty, requires power. But he who acquires this power becomes a master mind. He can conquer fate. He can have what he wants. This power can only be acquired by getting hold of the basic fact which is behind all appearances. And that fact is that there is one thinking substance from which and by which all things are made. Then we must grasp the truth that every thought held in this substance becomes a form and that man can so impress his thoughts upon it as to cause them to take form and become visible things. When we realize this, we lose all doubt and fear, for we know that we can create what we want to create. We can get what we want to have and can become what we want to be. As a first step toward getting rich, you must believe in the three fundamental statements given previously in this chapter. And in order to emphasize them, I repeat them here. There is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which, in its original state, permeates, penetrates, and fills the interspace of the universe. A thought in this substance produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. Man can form things in his thought and, by impressing his thought upon formless substance, can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. You must lay aside all other concepts of the universe than this monistic one. And you must dwell upon this until it is fixed in your mind and has become your habitual thought. Read these creed statements over and over again. Fix every word upon your memory and meditate upon them until you firmly believe what they say. If a doubt comes to you, cast it aside as a sin. Do not listen to arguments against this idea. Do not go to churches or lectures where a contrary concept of things is taught or preached. Do not read magazines or books which teach a different idea. If you get mixed up in your faith, all your efforts will be in vain. Do not ask why these things are true, nor speculate as to how they can be true. Simply take them on trust. The science of getting rich begins with the absolute acceptance of this faith. And this concludes chapter four. Let's move on to chapter five.